Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. Happy Transformational Tuesday. How's everyone doing out there? We've got Nick Vile entering the conversation here with regards to the TikToker who accused Clayton Eckerd of cheating on his girlfriend Susie Evans with her, only to find out that Clayton had empirical evidence, timestamps, digitally, that he was in several different time zones away from her, and she has since apologized and said she was catfished. Well, here's the footage. By the way, did I just not nail that intro? I mean, we've made, what, seven, eight, fifty videos regarding the matter, which, by the way, yesterday's video um, called She's Lying uh, is probably the most... A love I've received from you guys for a video I've ever made. It's instantly going into the Hall of Fame of funniest videos I think we've ever made just because this whole scenario is so absurd. Well, Nick here actually has a take that I, I, actually, I actually appreciate. Basically saying that the thirst that exists out there is what probably led her to do this. And I think if we look at this from a place of a little bit more grace. Now, I know I've been tough, although I'll say pretty honest with my opinions regarding Sasha here and how she was led astray in this scenario. Uh, wondering if she uh, was even catfished at all to, you know, the intention, the motivation, the timestamps and previous videos where she's done similar things. But let's look at it from a bigger picture. Why feel the need to... Um, go viral so badly on TikTok. And when it does come down to seeking attention, can I even blame her? Can Nick blame her? Nick and I are both also seeking attention, albeit in a different way, through the internet and making the internet dollars. Nick's got a media company. I've got my YouTube channel and my Patreon. Join it right now, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. I'll go live at 10 a.m. Pacific for two hours today, uh, making content and doing some behind the scenes chatter about all the things I can't share publicly. But the point being is, look, Sticks and, uh, you know, I, I don't think I don't think we can properly judge her. I think it's really a society issue that the algorithm is leaning in the direction of people uh, pushing the limit to get views, follows, love and all that jazz. Let's listen to what Nick has to say regarding this scenario. And we're going to show the security footage. She, I, I think, identifies herself as a somewhat of a TikTok influencer. Mm -hmm. She's had two... TikToks go extremely viral. Mm -hmm. One has like 33 million views and it's her like eating cake, smashing like cake in her face. Her TikTok after a quick, quick glance comes across as someone who, I mean, it's on TikTok, is seek, seeking attention. And, and by, by any means possible. But also I That's think- That's a good way to put it. By any means it's possible. It's something, when you have a pop like this, she had a TikTok have 33 million, 30, Three million views. That and I like the interjection here um, by Andrea Russett. By any means possible, it really comes down to collateral damage. How can we ethically have fun, uh, provide entertainment, and yet not hurt somebody else who doesn't deserve the hurt? And that's kind of what stand up juggles with all the time. How can I provide laughs at my own expense and yet not make fun of people in a way that's going to make them feel bad? And that's kind of tough in today's world. It's insane. And then she had another one have 8 million views. Also insane. Mm -hmm. And now she has like 157,000 followers on TikTok. So uh, uh, safe to say that all of her followers came from that those yeah. two TikToks. So what, what, the reason I point that out is because what that does, it, there's, a, there's, there's a kind of a parallel between, you know, going on The Bachelor in the sense that like you have this pop of fame, this mm -hmm. pop of attention. And it's even more fleeting when it's a single TikTok or yeah. two TikToks. And you get this buzz, you get this follower, and there's this immediate, it does something to you in your, in your psychology. It does something you to want to like keep it going. Oh yeah, it's addictive. Yes. You want that like adrenaline rush of like, oh my God, I'm going viral. But I, it, it really comes down to, uh, I don't know if Pavlovian is the right terminology here, but there is a reflex. These apps are built by engineers who also engineered casinos and slot machines. And they, TikTok is actually an app that has basically shared their algorithm and said, we'll push people to get them to go viral because it feels good. TikTok was the first app that made people viral right away, real fast. And then it encouraged people to make more content. So there is a reward that happens there when people make content like this and we're starting to see 
uh, some sort of adjudication, I would say, with you know re- my you know referee Dave over here, of saying, all right, gone too far. The guy who lied about Clayton cheating on him with it with you know the guy who you know we are looking at all of these and TikToks. Oh, it's all in good fun. We're we're not we're not worried about plagiarism. Comics are having their jokes ripped off. Whenever you see something funny that's said on TikTok, I go, I'm sure someone else said that and they just ripped it off. There's no real law that's going on out there. So if someone like Sasha here. Um, what were to just fabricate it, there's no recourse. We say, well, you know, you could sue for defamation. It's like, yeah, all that stuff. But she's pretty much covered legally. Like she can say, well, I thought he was, so I wasn't, I didn't have malicious intent. Now, what I actually believe on the matter, I'll share with you guys in a minute, but I'm actually, I'm beginning to empathize a lot more with Sasha and realize maybe she was catfished. Maybe she was too drunk and too naive and too young to look at any of the red flags that existed. Um, Maybe the guy exists. I kind of believe at this point I have to take her word for it uh, rather than sort of just assume she's lying. I think it's somewhere usually in the middle. Yeah. This just in, I got got us some exclusive content from my good friend, Zach. Um, He sent us the photos from the security footage because as I mentioned, he did the live with the lawyer. She offered to send him the photos. Now he's sharing them with us. Okay. Um, <laughs> from my perspective, this man does not look like Clayton. Let and he has very... By the way, how many producers should I get? He's got two producers just firing stuff up on their laptops. All I got is my trusty 10 fingers here. I need to, I need, I need some of this energy. Dark hair. And he seems very lanky. Not like oh, Clayton not whatsoever. Even, not even... So, of course, let's assume... I don't know. She's 5'5". Five, five. I, I have no idea how tall she is. Uh, he's not... The Clayton's build. Uh, you were talking about a guy who played two months of professional football. Clayton is a giant. He's got giant broad shoulders, traps, rhomboids. He's got it all. Latissimus Dorsey. I mean, he's got it all. This guy doesn't. This guy looks like your average tech bro in New York. Got some sort of linen pant thing happening. I don't know what's going on there. He looks like he's uh, you know, uh, he's going straight to church after this uh, tryst. Uh, so not him. Been close. This is from. But by all means, he's. It's not. It's not undeniably not him at the same time. You know what I mean? In the back. It's a, yeah, it's a white dude with brown hair. He has like very dark hair, like dark, dark, and it's not curly at all. Well. And because we saw this image, you go, all right, well, the idea that Sasha is fabricating this, you know, she provided, you know, an image that looks like a golden eye video game you know, surveillance footage. Like it's really bad. Ob- obviously, it looks like it was taken as a photo right off of the security monitor. It looks there's there's nothing there's nothing going on here. With that said. I, I don't believe I don't believe she completely made the story up now because it's st- we're starting to paint a picture where she believed what she was saying. No, as far as why she doubled down on it when he proved that he wasn't there. You know, a lot of times we see this in cults. We see this in QAnon. We see this in different places. You provide people with the evidence that they're wrong and the survival need to be right supersedes the evidence right in front of you. This, the election wasn't stolen. Look at the f- evidence. No, ah, no, no. You know, we see it with people. There's people in the audience going, damn right it was. You know what I mean? And hard evidence d- doesn't mean as much anymore because what we've got in our brain is this like, no, no, no. If, if I'm wrong, I've dug myself so far into a hole that it has so many ramifications. I have to be right. And that's kind of where they go. I'm going to jump ahead to the 30 minute mark. You can go listen to the whole thing. I'm not trying to rip off the whole video here. Uh, by the way, I have, I have to give credit where it's due. Nick's YouTube channel is crushing mine. As you guys know, we were the first to 50,000. We beat him and passed him. And we're probably 1,500 subscribers more than him. And now look at him now, 58,400. We're at uh, 55,000. 200, something like that. I will say Dave Neal show has 5,000 and my other channel has 1,500. So technically we're around 60 plus thousand subscribers, but either way, credit where it's due to this small YouTuber right here. He's beating me. I don't know what else to say about it. Um, uh, but uh, if you subtract 5,000 subscribers for each uh, producer, maybe I'm winning, but uh, either way, let's go to the 30 minute mark and just wrap this puppy up. And then we're going to go live on Patreon and discuss some behind the scenes stuff going on. All right, here it is. Most people probably call him out for it and, and uh, <laughs> other drunk people don't. And actually, that's really shitty if that's what's happening. It's not okay to do that. But people- yeah, I mean, there's a consent issue, right? I, I, I'm not going to go far, so far as to, 
to label what that actually is, if it's the R word or not. People have said that. But the idea that if you say you're somebody and then the person gives consent to hook up with you, believing that you are that somebody, and then they find out that you're not, there's for sure a con happening. There's for sure a con. Uh, whether or not that's what this guy did, we'll have to see. Do it. The fact <laughs> that this person thinks they hooked up, hooked up with a person yeah. and thought it was Clayton only to go back to his Instagram, look at all these photos or yeah, watch The Bachelor true. and be like, that's the guy and still make a video. And then after people saying it's not possible, she mm -hmm. like doubled and tripled down to the length where she was like, no, I need you to prove to me that it wasn't to him. To the length where she was DMing Clayton himself and was like, no, you were in my bed and at after, two in the morning. And if you're like told, you know, fuck my my first time I got engaged when I was like, you know, my one of my my buddy's girlfriend was just like, I need to tell you something. Oh, she's cheating on you. Mm. And your first thought is like, it's not, it can't, that's not can't horror, horror, horror story. story. And then, like, but then you. By the way, when you hear that, you you totally understand why Nick wouldn't want to trust people. I mean, horrible, horrible to hear that that would happen to somebody. Start wondering if it is possible. And yeah. You you know like yeah so imagine like if if. You know, Susie, when we met her, so impressive. And, Love her. And, and, and I'm sure she would have been headstrong and calm about it and yeah. done her due diligence. But, like, for anyone, it's just a... Initial shock. A terrible... Yeah, tough, tough situation, absolutely. Um, the reason... I'm, I'm, now, I, I've, I've looked at this and... Uh, I mean, tru truly, this is... I'm not jumping on a bandwagon where I go, oh my gosh, Sasha, she 100% is guilty of this. We've just shown evidence that she's made TikTok similarly where she's hooked up with guys and talked to athletes and celebrities. She's kind of, it's a little formulaic. With that said, the fact that Sasha reached out to Susie truly makes me believe that Sasha felt like that was Clayton. If she was doing this just for TikTok's sake, and was fabricating the whole thing, I don't think she would have reached out to Sushi. It's almost like she wanted to believe that this was the story so that she could be a part of the slamming that would go down of a guy cheating on his girlfriend that was on national TV. But so I'm giving her that benefit of the doubt. I know a lot of people won't, but I, I have always kind of said, you know, like, I, to, it's easier to just trust people than be proven otherwise. And in this scenario, I have talked with Sasha. And... She she did a lot of reckless stuff and she got burnt, you know, and she doubled down and she she obviously was doing this all to to gain attention on TikTok. But I at the same time do believe her that she thought she was being catfished until new information comes out. Follow me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Neal. I have a live stand-up show tonight. If you want to uh, join us, it's in Hollywood at D Neal's free tickets. Um, and uh, we'll talk to you guys in a little bit. We'll see you on the Patreon. Bye, everybody.